In this demonstration, we're going to look at how to define a ledger in general ledger. And we'll start off by building our chart of accounts, by building the accounting structure. And then we'll enter some values into the value sets that we've created. And then we'll view the current calendar and also we also view the, uh, the currencies. And then we'll go on and define the ledger. So you log into Oracle eBusiness Suite and you select your general ledger responsibility. From the navigator, you then select your, um, the navigation to creating your accounting key flex field structure, which is set up financials, flex fields, key uh, segments. And then we'll search for the general ledger accounting flex field and we're going to create a structure called YO accounting flex so I'm just going to add a new line in the code and I'm going to type in YO underscore accounting underscore flex and that's going to be called YO Accounting Flex. And I'm just going to call it Yemi Accounting Flex Field. This could be the name of your company, um, Accounting Flex Field, or whichever name that you, you prefer. I'm now going to add my segments. I'm going to create five segments. I'll create a, a company segment, department, account. Uh, products and I'll have a spare segment as well. If I select new, um, first segment I want to create is called company and that will be in my first column which is going to be segment one and I'll just use number one for that. Uh, I'll, I'll create a value set for this in a little while but um, just before that uh, I'll um, change a list of values to CO. I'll save. I'll come out of the form, go into my value set, and I'll select value set. I'm going to use um, a value set that already exists, or if I wanted to, I could actually just create one. Let me just create one just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to call it YO underscore company. That's a new value set. Just going to call it Yemi's, Yemi's company. That's a value set that I'm going to use. List type, it could be long list of values. It could be a pop-up list or pop list, or I'm just going to select list of values. I could decide to have security or no security. I'll mainly will use this for my cross-validation rules and um, any other security that I want to place within my value set. So I'm going to put non-hierarchical security there. Format type. This is the format of the of the field of the data that wants to go into this field. It could be character, date, and so on. I'll just select character for now, and I'll make the maximum size of the field to be two characters. Um, I don't want it to be numbers only. I want it to be alphanumerics, um, and I also want it to be uppercase. So I'm just going to select uppercase, and I want it to write justify and zero fill uh, numbers. So if I entered one, the number one in that field. It will come up with zero zero, sorry zero one because I've got two characters for the field. I could, if I wanted to, put in a minimum value and a maximum value just to restrict uh, the range of values that I want in that field. Uh, from for the main for the moment, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I could also have a different validation type for the field, and I'll just leave it independent. So um, it could be dependent on another field. It could be. Um, from a database and so on, I could have no validation as well. So I'll just leave it as independent. Save the value and my value set, which is the construct of my field for company. And then I'll select YO company as my value for the field. 
I could, if I wanted to, um, specify the FlexFit qualifier. So just for this example, I will actually um, select a FlexFit qualifier for this field. Um, and I'll just select my FlexFit qualifier and I'll make it my, my balance and segment. So this is where I want my debits and credits uh, uh, to balance on my journals. So I'm just going to select my company segment as my balance and segment. Save, come out of the form. I set some flexible qualifiers for the um, for the company segment, but I didn't set it up for all the others. I'm going to set one up for my account segment and for my department. I'll make department my uh, cost center. So I'll select cost center segment for that. And I'll make my um, account the natural account segment. And this is the three key ones that you would normally set up. Save. I'll come out of the form. Um, I want to allow dynamic inserts. So anytime I create additional accounts combination, it will automatically add that combination into my account. So I'm going to save it. Allow dynamic inserts. I'm going to freeze my um, flexible definition. So if I want to make changes to my structure, I need to go back and unfreeze it before doing that as well. So this actually creates uh, my structure for me. Um, all the things that I, I can have is the segment separator. I've got period here, which is dots in between each of the segment. And once I'm happy with my structure, I can click on compile and then this will then compile my flex field uh, definition. And that's given me that it's been compiled uh, successfully. And that's how I will create my accounting structure. Next I need to enter some values into some of the structure that I've just created. So if I go into my setup, financials, flex fields, key values, I'm going to search for the YO values that I actually um, created for my segment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the application which is General Ledger. General Ledger application and the title is my accounting flex field and then the structure is my YO accounting flex structure. So if I click on find to find the details so I can see that in my company segment there is actually no values here so I'm going to put value for my company segment um, I'm going to put zero zero and I'm going to put in the description and call this um, head office head office so that's just the value so if I type in 00, zero that's going to be referring to my head office and then value zero 01 will be my it, this could just be my UK operations and then T which will be our total for all companies you can just call it uh, the T codes which is total for all companies. Now in the values and hierarchy qualifiers, I'm going to make the total all companies a, a parent. In your segment qualifiers, allow budgeting, no, allow posting, no. Click on OK. Save. And then for the second segment, which have got department, I can then enter some of the values for my department, which is my cost center. I'll save this, and then my next 
now you see that I've already got some filled in already for my account. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some additional accounts just for us to see how we can enter some additional ones and also use the segment qualifiers. 331 percentage, I could use my control F11 but I'm just going to use my query by example run. So there's 3310 So I'm going to add a new one called um, 3312, which I'm going to call YO retained, YO retained earnings. And in my value soup, and I'm going to make these allow budgeting, yes. Allow posting, yes. Account type is going to be my owner's equity. So that's my owners ownership and stock account. So if I, which is my share, shareholder's equity account. Reconcile, no. And uh, third party control, no. Gonna click on OK. Uh, I've got cash as I said, 1110. And you can see that the Qualifiers showing it as an asset, and I could have some revenue accounts. Um, let me just search for some revenue accounts. Find revenue accounts would be my four thousand numbers. So if I search from four thousand to four thousand two hundred, let's see what we've got. Click on find. And you can see that I've got a revenue account that gives you all the revenue accounts and that's the revenue account. We've also got um, allocations for liability and also for expense uh, accounts as well. So that's my account segments set up. I'm going to go into my product, product accounts that I've set up on the system. And my spare, this is just the uh, default accounts uh, that I've got set up for my spare. So that's all my segment values. And that's going to compile uh, all the hierarchies. Next, I'm going to have a look at the accounting calendar, which is found in my setup, financials, calendars, and then I've got types and I'm going to look for all the different uh, query enter period type I'm going to search for month view query by example run and you can see that I've got 13 period calendar month 12 period calendar month. I'm going to use my 13 period uh, calendar month for my for my uh, ledger. So that's my calendars that I'll be using. Then I'm going to look at my currencies that are enabled. So if I go into again, if I go into setup currencies, define. View query by example, enter view query by example, run. Could have done F11, control F11, and these are all the currencies that are defined on the system. And it tells you which ones are enabled and if you have effective dates uh, for the different currencies. Next, we'll define our ledger. And in defining our ledger, we need to know the chart of account structure, which is our accounting flexible structure that we have. We also need to know the currency and also the calendar and also the accounting convention. We're going to be using um, accruals, which is now called the four C's. It used to be called the three C's, but it's now called the four C's, which is the convention, accounting convention, being added uh, to the C's.